Hello and welcome to Impera Project, a project built on a dream. Last time we presented you five philosophical movies we adore. We hope you found them interesting and you'll give them a try. Today we want to talk about why it is impossible to be a perfect stoic and why it is fine for that matter. Stoicism is a philosophy that promotes a lifestyle in which you are not attached to anything, in which nothing bothers you and all the answers come from inside. This lifestyle is difficult especially in our times, but using De Vita Beta on the happy life by Lucius Seneca, we can provide some answers to your questions about Stoicism. Before we start this video, we would appreciate if you'd take the time to subscribe to our channel, leave a like and a comment so we know you enjoy our content. In ancient Greece, Stoicism was a philosophy that applied to everyone, from slaves to emperors. Everyone could listen and learn the teachings of Stoicism. The Stoic philosophers were exposing their wisdom in plain sight, not hidden or hindered by walls of schools. They talked to everyone. That's why you can see a large variety of people using Stoicism. Epictetus was a slave and yet one of the biggest Stoic philosophers, while Marcus Aurelius was for a time the strongest man in the world, the emperor of the Roman Empire. And yet, both of them were preaching the same ideas. More than so, the great Roman emperor was influenced by the teachings of a slave. Paradoxal and yet true, because Stoicism does not make any difference between people. A human being, poor or rich, lives only for other human beings, and fate, sometimes harsh, brings equality among the humankind. But there is one Stoic philosopher who was different, Lucius Seneca a magistrate in the Roman Empire and the advisor of Emperor Nero. Lucius Seneca was a Stoic philosopher who preferred being rich to being poor, being healthy to being sick, luxury to lackness. Does this make him less of a Stoic? No. Actually, his behavior, his ideas that having something is anytime better than not having something, brings forth a lot of explanation into what a Stoic mentality should be. His attitude answers many questions which both Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius failed to. In his book on the happy life, he explains his way of thinking in many paragraphs. We will address a couple of them. Philosophers don't act as they speak, but still they act more because they speak, because they think with their thoughts fair. True, if their actions were as strong as their words, who would be happier than them? Meanwhile, you don't have to dislike noble words nor hearts full of novel thoughts. Good intentions are worthy of praise, no matter their result. Here, Seneca answers one of the main problems common folk had and still have regarding philosophy and philosophers, that they only talk and in more cases than not, they do not live and act by the ideas that they promote. But especially, the last statement serves as proof of what it means to be a Stoic philosopher. Stoicism promotes a total control of emotion. So no matter what your action is, as long as the feelings behind it are good and pure, it is alright. Fighting someone is not bad if you are not angry. Punishing someone is not bad if you don't do it with hatred. Just like helping someone is not good if you only care about the reward. He adds, and we will shorten the passage a bit because it is very long. Like this, if one of those who bark all together against philosophy would tell me what they usually say. Why are you speaking more fiercely than you live? Why do you lower your tone before superior? Why do you believe that money is a tool that you require? Why are you affected by damage? Why do you cry when your wife dies? When your friend dies? You care about fame and you get hurt by malign words. I will answer as such. I am not wise. And so, to feed your curiosity, I will never be. As such, ask from me not to be just like the best. Ask from me to be better than the worst. It is enough for me to remove one of my vices daily and to scold myself for my mistakes. I have not yet cured myself and I will never do it. I am happier if I take painkillers and not medicine for my good and I am pleased if it doesn't hurt as often, just like I am if it doesn't hurt at all. But so fragile as I am, if I put together all your legs, I am a runner. So you see, that's probably why most people look to Stoicism as if it was an unreachable target. People don't understand that in Stoicism your actions should not always match your thoughts. As long as you believe in good and in justice and you do your best to keep under control your desires, it is alright to have them. 
it is impossible not to feel any desire or any wish or any emotion. But it is within your power to control everything that comes from inside, to be the same with or without something. And at the end of his speech, Seneca says, the wise, in fact, does not believe himself to be unworthy of the fate's gifts. He doesn't love riches, but prefers them. He does not welcome them in his soul, but in his house. He does not reject the wealth he owns, but he keeps it and wishes it to become a better material for his virtue. And so, Seneca explains how the Stoics should see and act upon being rich. Material wealth should be a leaping point toward greater good, because from a position of power, Seneca believes, it is far easier to do good and act with virtue than from a position of poverty. Because it is indeed difficult to think of the good of others when your own good is in danger. A feat of might only a couple of people are truly capable of. The vision which Seneca shares with the world comes with a more human approach to Stoicism. While Epictetus couldn't really access this part of life because of his social status as a slave and Marcus Aurelius couldn't really explain these concepts because of his idealism, Seneca speaks plainly about a variety of subjects and questions which are more relatable to average folk of today's society. Nowadays, it is really difficult to be as poor as Epictetus or as powerful and rich as Marcus Aurelius, but it is easier to approach the level of wealth which Seneca had, level of wealth which comes with its own troubles. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, share and subscribe. And until next time, we wish you a beautiful day.